Hey guys, welcome back to another Flesh and Blood video. This video is proudly brought to you by the House of Cards, the official sponsor of my stream. Be sure to check out the link in the description below for all of your Flesh and Blood needs. The Ninja and Illusionist matchup are definitely not new to the CC metagame, but Enigma and Zen are both very new to the CC metagame, which makes for some very interesting games because both decks are relatively new and trying to be figured out. Now, in the past, Ninja has been very favored into Illusionist, but you know what they say, if Illusionist has one point of life, they aren't dead. Guys, in full transparency here, this match is an hour long because my opponent took forever to play the game and my internet was lagging. When you pair those two together, it really took us quite a while to get through this game, so I apologize in advance. Thanks for stopping by, guys. I hope you enjoyed the match. Okay, we're playing against Zen, and I am going second here. Um, I definitely think that Balance of Justice is the better play because we know that our opponent is going to be playing... Art of Wars in their deck, so I'm definitely a big fan of running balance. Um, Footsteps is also very beneficial in this matchup. So what is this going to be for one? So we're just going to go ahead and give this... Um, I will pitch the Shimmers of Silver, because I think that Haze Bending offers us more value in the way of trying to... Um, in the way of actually trying to... Hmm... Haze Bending offers us more value in, in being able to protect our board and like also playing more defense, but I think we're just going to block six. I don't want to take any damage if I can help it on turn zero, so I'm pretty comfortable just letting that go. Uh, this hand is absolutely abysmal. There's not really much I can do about it either. We're just going to attack for four. We drew one of the all defensive hands here, so... We're going to attack for four. I probably would have played the sink below on my turn for what it's worth to be able to um, try and keep the haze bending for a hand like this. But, you know, with Command and Conquer, we didn't really have that choice. So. It was on Cosmic Awakening. You pitched a blue card this turn, create a Crouching Tiger in your hand. Okay, so my opponent does have a Crouching Tiger. I am. I think we're going to play the Fate for Scene here. We'll just go ahead and block effectively, I think is the best thing we can do. We'll put this on the bottom, I guess. I might have, maybe I'm just supposed to give the Miraging Metamorph there, I'm not sure. Um, we're going to say no blocks here. I don't really know why. They're going to give it... Plus three, and if it hits, all right, so we are going to stop this. We're going to sink this in, put the Metamorph on the bottom. 10,000 year reunion is definitely not a card we want to see in this matchup. It's not really good in any capacity, pretty much at any point in time. So we will just block with it here. I think I would rather block the, um, the Kakara here. We have gone through two turn cycles without taking any damage, which I would consider a small victory. And we are getting to add a permanent to the board, which is where we want to be. It is worth noting that our opponent loaded more cards in than us. If they play patiently and what I would call correctly, they are, might live in a world where they can Kakara us to death and like try to fatigue us. Um, I'm not really sure that's what they'll be trying to accomplish, but it is something that they can do if they want to. I'm really hoping to draw a hold the line soon um, so that we can have something decent in Arsenal to try and hang on to if we need it. Also, during this matchup, I like to use Tunic um, for footsteps or for uphold tradition pretty much whenever I can. Uh, I think using those cards to add to the board and play defensively is a very beneficial thing for me to be doing. So using Tunic beneficially with footsteps or tradition to put myself in a better spot is always good. I would think my opponent takes four here if they like their hand, but my opponent might be in a situation where they want to block. See, this card is so good because it gives them a tiger in their banish zone, and they also get to block for three. It's also very good against me. Um, could be situationally awkward at times, depending on what their hand looks like, but... Next tiger gets plus one. Okay. 
We're going to try and protect the Waxing Spectre. If I can help it. I'm going to block with the footsteps. We're going to pitch the Rage Spectre. There's not really a world where we're going to be doing multiple of those here. Um, it's worth noting they could have a Maul here, and if they do, I have no way to protect from it, but I still think that we're okay to play like this. So I guess I should have pitched the Unravel Aggression for something like this. I could use the Uphold Tradition to just... Uh, I guess this has Shuko effect, right? Man, I really want to Arsenal hold the line here. I don't think that I want to... <sighs> Arsenaling this card is like priority number one, I think. So I think we're just going to waste the block on Brothers in Arms. We are seeing a small mistake on my part. Um... I mean, I guess I might as well, right? If I'm going to have to play the Unravel Aggression, then I'm going to have to play it. There's not much else there to do. So they create a Tiger in their hand, which means we're losing the Waxing Spectre this turn. So I was considering more of it didn't really matter which one we pitched. I didn't want to put these together, but I, w I wish I would have pitched this because... I would have given some value on the would have given some more value um, in my turn efficiency. So we're just gonna let the waxing specter eat this. I think that's an okay use of what I'm trying to accomplish here. This is going to be for one. I will take one. Don't really care about that. And then. I mean, this can hit, right? Like, it doesn't really matter. Um, I like that they have the combo active thing now. That's pretty cool. I mean, they make a couple of tigers. Like, I guess there's always a world where something could be played here. I am more interested in playing the Unravel Aggression because I do not want to take four damage here. Like, they've already activated Shuko. There's nothing really they can follow it up with here. We're going to put Hold the Line on the bottom first because I would much rather see the Hold the Line. That card is an absolute all-star. We have somehow managed to see all three Unravel Aggressions in four turns, which is extremely unfortunate. Um, playing this blue is not bad in this matchup, but it's definitely not where I want to be. Um, I think we'll actually take two here. Not really a reason to block this. Like, we're going to have to find some turns to give up some damage points. And I think this is one of them. This is definitely one that we're looking at. Okay, so their next tiger is going to be for two. So, I'm just going to say no blocks. We're going to pitch the Unravel Aggression to flash in a Waning Vengeance. We make a Spectral Shield. And they come in for six. Interesting. Interesting follow-up. I was not expecting the old Command and Conquer there. Um, so... I guess four, five, six. I don't really want to give up the balance this early. It feels pretty early to be giving that up. And then we can use the uphold tradition to give this plus one. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. This feels really weird, but I guess it's fine. So we're currently blocking six, playing Protect the Spectral Shield. We're going to activate Uphold Tradition. <clears throat> I would rather use the resource now and save Tunic to be able to block more efficiently on a different turn cycle with it. So we'll give the Spectral Shield. We'll send it for two. 
being able to play offense without really taking any cards out of my deck is pretty beneficial for me. Stride of Reprisal. I've seen a lot of people playing this card. I think this card's pretty cool. It's a pretty good card. And then we always have the Restless Coalescence that we can flash in to just steal a counter and make an extra Spectral Shield if we need to. So we'll just kind of play through that as we need to here. Or I might just be using Standing Order. Create a Crouching Tiger in your hand. So he has a tiger in his hand because he blocked with a sink below. I mean, I want to be able to put this in play, right? Like this doesn't seem like a bad card to put into play to me. We could also, if we're able to keep Command and Conquer in this, we could just throw, we could throw the Spectral Shield and then Command and Conquer. And I think being able to throw Command and Conquer would be beneficial for us because it's probably going to be the Kakara after this. I'm spitballing here. It's going to be Kakara after this into a Tiger. Maybe I'm just supposed to give up. I mean, I hate to give up the standing order, right? Because it just potentially blocks for five. No, nope, that's fine. If we had a hand that like we could like add to the board offensively, then maybe it'd be worth it. So the Tiger's coming in for two after this. We're going to block here. Tiger is for two. So we block Footsteps. This does not have Shuko active, so we can use Footsteps and Uphold Tradition to block and try to keep our hand the way we want it just depends on whether they have a finisher or not like there's always the possibility that our opponent just has a another card they want to play so we get to attack for two go again again like we are applying some amount of pressure here trying to play offense it's really tough to acquire like a symbol aboard this is a potential 0 for 5, but it blocks very effectively here. I kind of like that they have all these, like, blue cards in their deck because, like, all these, like, they're playing, like, Sinks and, like, Tiger Eye Reflex. Like, all cards that, like, help fuel their game plan, but they're also cards that don't play very efficiently with what, like, they just don't, I don't know, they just don't seem that great to me. I could be wrong. I could just be crazy. <laughs> So I can just let the Essence of Ancestry Mind go. We can just let this card go. See, he's also on Unravel Aggression. And I'm hopeful that like enough hands like that will just make their hand awkward. And I'll be able to like hopefully try to run them out. If my opponent has enough awkward hands, then we can close the game out. It is a very real possibility. We'll just say no blocks here. Letting the Essence of Ancestry go. Now, it does not have an effect um, because we do have an Illusionist Aura here. Okay, so this is for four. And we're going to name go again. So let's block four. We're going to hope that we just don't get absolutely obliterated um, by a mall. I think a mall is just anything it's plus three, but I'm not sure on that. So let's play... Let's flash in the Waxing Spectre. Let's flash in the Restless Coalescence. We'll steal both the counters. 
and then we'll let the spectral shield go. We lose our Spectral Shield. Well, that really sucks. I don't... Did I know they had another Tiger in their hand? Well, if I did, I'm not sure. That's a real feels bad. I don't think we knew that, but I might have. It just sucks because we have to let it all go, so there's no point in even making a Spectral Shield. That's just a real feels bad play. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to go to 29. And I guess I'm just going to Arsenal the Waning Vengeance on my turn. This is a card that I've wanted to play for a hot minute and just haven't really had an opportunity or a hand that I like. I haven't I haven't really had a chance to play this card yet, but I do think it's going to be very good. So I think what I want to do is try to go through this turn and then arsenal this next turn. I mean... We'll block with the Rage Specter. I think that's okay, because we can pitch the levels to play Waning Vengeance, and then we can block with the Standing Order and the Footsteps here. Like, my opponent may not have a Tiger here. It may not matter, but... Hmm... <laughs> I mean, I think we're just flashing this in. I don't know if, like, I'm getting a major lag spike right now or what's happening. It appears I'm getting a major lag spike. We're going to pitch the levels. So I could have taken the two, blocked with two cards, and then put this into play and played offense with it, which would have been a little bit better, but... I never, I, I didn't think it was just going to be the third Command and Conquer. I know they shuffled, but I just didn't think it was going to be the third Command and Conquer right there coming at us. Either I'm really lagging or, yeah, I'm really lagging. The internet is just not being my friend right now. I was like, my opponent just left. I was like, we will claim victory. I thought it was me lagging, but I guess my opponent was, I don't know, doing whatever my opponent does. Um, we're going to be left with a Spectral Shield. <laughs> which means we can attack for one and then arsenal the Deep Blue Mist, which I think is going to be a very good card for us. Um, this card gets a lot of value in this matchup, so... We just haven't had a chance to really set up a board. Man, plus they've had Tiger Eye. I was like, they've had Tiger Eye Reflex like almost every single time I have needed. Like, this is the this is the second time they've had it. And there's been a lot of turns where I haven't even played offense so far in our eight turn game. And they've had they've had it twice on turns that 
Would have been nice if they didn't. So we can give things minus one here. Which means I can block this with footsteps. <laughs> so let's block with Astral Etchings. I think that's the worst card in our hand. All right, well, this isn't really a turn that's going to line up for us to... Um... We will pitch the haze bending for the footsteps and then we're currently taking nothing because the shield is going to eat this crouching tiger for one makes sense we're going to say no blocks go to 28 this is going to be for one also because of shuko so we're going to go to 27 our opponent's like truly nickel and diming us nickel and diming us here Oh, sorry. So, we're going to take one and go to 27. I forgot I need to flash in my Waxing Spectre after this happens. Because, like, I don't have any resources, and it's better than me not being able to use it. So, I would much rather be in a spot where i can flash this in i was like now if they have an attack they have an attack there's not much i can do about it but we're gonna save tunic to play our dense blue mist and then we found exactly what i wanted a card that would let us flip and that would flip into chi and we can balance here which i think is pretty good i like being able to balance we still have we still have quite a few good defensive cards here. There's like, uh, there is what? I mean, we still have two more Fate for Scenes, two more Sink Blows. We're on a pretty decent amount of cards this turn. Um, or we're on a pretty decent amount of good defensive cards. So this is four because of the Art of War. And they've only pitched one card, so I mean... You're picking go again here. So when they pick go again, we are going to use Tunic. Well, we're going to try and use Tunic. My opponent will pass. I mean, they 100% should have waited to do that, but that's fine. So we're going to play Dense Blue Mist, which means everything gets minus one. Because this is... So they have two Crouching Tigers and a Chi in their hand, and their Tigers get plus one this turn. So I think what we're going to do is actually let this go. I don't really want to let it go, but there's no world where I can protect this rationally, I don't think. We're going to let Dense Blue Mist resolve. This is now for three. I mean, we could, like, take a chance where we're able to keep our Waxing Spectre for next turn. Um... Man, our opponent is taking their sweet time this game. Let's go. Pick it up. Let's go, opponent. All right, that's a good one to draw. We're going to play Rising Sun, Setting Moon. I'm going to put homage to the ancestors in the bottom of the deck because we don't need more chi. Let's see. So they have two tigers that are going to be... One's going to be for one. One's going to be for two. 
And then they're able to activate Zen to go get the... I mean, what card can they get? They can get a 0 for 3, so... If we block here, we're forced to block on the next one. Block, pitch shimmers to block, so we're just going to have to let this go. There's no world where I can keep this this turn, so I think what we're going to try to do is set up a world where they have three tigers now. So we definitely made the correct play. So I think what we're going to try to do is set up a world where we can... We're going to try to set up a world where we can put shimmers into play. I mean... Yeah, this is fine. I don't really care about blocking this. And this is a... If Crouching Tiger was the last attack this combat chain, it gets go again. And... Okay, so that's quite a... That's quite a decent buff. So if I want to activate Enigma attack and then Ars and play the Shimmers and Arsenal this, I need to take this too. I need to block a card here, and then I need to block a card on the Tiger after this, which means I'm going to leak two more points of damage and put myself to 22 this turn. Yeah, this is going to be for four. We're going to block with Astral Etchings. The problem I'm having this game is that they're also just keeping so many more cards in their deck than me. And then this one's going to be for one. So we're just going to take one. I would love to have Tunic here where I could, you know, block with Footsteps if I wanted to. But we're just going to, we're forced to go to 21 here. I think arsenaling the sink below is a very good play for us. So we're going to activate Enigma. Attack for two. Would like to get somewhat of a board presence going. If I can get to a point to where we can get some board presence going and I can start altering the outcome of their turns a little bit by forcing them to block with one or two cards, then we'll be in a really good place. I'm curious to know how people are using this card because I heard somebody say the other day that they use this kind of as a get out of jail free card for when they needed like a better turn. Um, and then I heard some people say that like I heard somebody say the other day that like you want to use it as like a way to like really just like propel yourself forward even further into a winning position than you already are. And I'm curious to know like if you watch this, let me know your thoughts. I'd like to hear what you all think about that. Okay, so the next Crouching Tiger they play gets plus one this turn. We can now, I don't know, we have a world where we can block with footsteps and we can pitch shimmers to play astral etchings, put this into play. I don't really think that's where we want to be though. I mean, that's fine. It already had go again, so. Here is what we can do. We can flash in a Restless Coalescence. And we can take the counter. Let the counter go. We're going to remove the counter to make another Spectral Shield. And then we will say no blocks. Losing our Coalescence here, because Coalescence is probably not going to be how we win the game in this matchup. This Tiger is going to be for one. Why is this? Oh, the Chakra makes us for two, which is fine. Um, we'll block with the 10,000 Year Reunion. They're going to activate Zen. Breed Anger is a 0 for 4. Oh, I guess they decided to get something different. 
Tiger Swipe. Okay. Technically, if they throw that right now, it'll trigger Shuko and come in for five, which means I'm blocking Footsteps and Sink Below, pitching the Shimmers. I need them to have like one turn where they kind of don't go like a few wide so that I can try to get back into this. This is from their hand, correct? So I think I'm just going to give the sink below. And we're just going to put the shimmers on the bottom. I mean, it's not what I would call great by any means, but I think it's fine. Tiger swipe's going to be for five. Now, crouching tiger for one. We're going to pitch the astral etchings here. They have no way to block. Tiger Swipe is for four, but it doesn't matter. So we block three, let the Spectral Shield eat one of these, or like just eat the last point here, and then Crouching Tiger doesn't matter. They don't have any way to buff it. They're attacking Shimmers with their Tiger that was going to do zero damage. That was a very smart play. <laughs> we'll attack for one with our Spectral Shield. Put our opponent down to 37. I honestly am very surprised that our opponent is playing such a defense reaction heavy deck. Like, they've played... Sinks and they're on Tiger Eye Reflexes. We've also seen Unravel Aggression be played. And they've not, like, bricked a hand yet. Like, they haven't had a single hand that has bricked or been, like, almost virtually unplayable. Which really can happen a lot when you're playing Ninja. And I say that as someone who played 5 for the better part of, you know, 3 months. So, I'm kind of surprised to see that there's not more awkward turn stimming from their hand. Stimming from their hands. Um, I mean, that's fine. Is it better to arsenal this? Probably not, right? It's probably better to arsenal this and try to set it up here. So we'll pitch the mirror guy, the manifestation. It's also a very good second cycle card with a chi. Um, I mean, we've only put a couple of cheese back into our deck at this point, but. I think we're just going to lose the Spectral Shield and go to 20. I would like to be able to throw the Command and Conquer at my opponent this turn if I can. Hopefully forcing their hand in a good way for us. If we can force two cards out of their hand and force them to slow down a little bit. I think that's exactly the kind of situation we're looking for. Like, those are the turns that we want to see. Okay, they're just going to take six. Lose a blue wind chakra. I mean, to be fair, that's not exactly what I would call a great card. So, I think that's pretty fair. Um, yeah, this is not great. So, let's... Use Tunic. I'm going to Arsenal hold the line here because they only have one Art of War left in their deck, and I'm absolutely going to be using it um, at the best turn that I can. There's only one more left, so... I'm just going to take two. If I'm able to, I'm going to try to pitch Preserve Tradition to put Manifestation of Mirror Guy into play, and we'll try to use the Fate for Scene wisely here. We're going to have to take some damage, but I don't know how else we're going to get back into this game if we don't play a little. we got to play a little bit of offense here, I think. I needed, I needed these cards to block, and unfortunately, they just don't. This is one of the problems you have when you're running against Ninja, is that your hands just don't block that effectively. They just passed with two cards in their hand. Well, I can safely say that I did not see that coming. 
You know what we could do? We could play this and then turn this into a chi and activate Enigma and Arsenal the Fate for Scene. But this has a lot of value whenever they have their last Art of War. Which has got to be coming up. So I think I'm more interested in putting this into play. And then we can just pass. Keeping the Fate for Scene in our hand, giving us a good defensive hand here. And we'll just try to play into this a little bit more here. I would love for this hand to be able for me to play the Art of War or the Hold the Line here so that I could then play this at the end of their turn to transcend and really get some value here. I think we'll just let the Mirror Guy go. Like, we're just blocking efficiently. Letting the mirror guy go. Most of your auras just get taken out of your out of your off the board when they do get into play, so <laughs> let's block with the astral etchings. Not looking like we're gonna be able to use our hold the line efficiently this turn, so. Yeah, this is like your your combo's not active here, so this is just a zero for two. Part of me would like to just pitch the fate for scene to block footsteps to keep this in our deck for a later turn. But I guess it's life now or life later. I mean, I don't really know. Is it me? Do I need to refresh here? No, it's my opponent. Um I guess we'll just give the fate for scene. I could give the hold the line knowing that I pitched one like really close to first cycle. I think maybe that's correct. Maybe I give the hold the line here and then I arsenal the fate for scene and just play into a little bit of offense next turn. This feels really weird and really wrong on a lot of levels, but... <laughs> Okay, so we're starting to slowly catch them on cards. Right now we have access to 27 cards and they have access to 32. So we're only down five, um, which is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I mean, there's a sink below to take away some offense, hopefully. Hopefully they finally like have a little bit of a hand that like is just stunted by some offense or by some defense. I mean, maybe that was what their last hand was and I just wasn't aware of it. Man, I wish I still wish I had a pulled tradition to be able to give this a counter here. I think that would be insanely impactful for us. So this is for two. I really need this to have a third blue in it. <laughs> um, I could pitch the favor scene to activate, to play dense blue mist, but then... Because I would like to play the command and conquer here, but maybe that's just not on the table for me this... Yeah, I guess let's block with the Command and Conquer. I guess I probably should have blocked with the Levels of Enlightenment, technically. Yep. So they make a Tiger in their hand, and then they search for a combo card. Which is Breed Anger, which gets blocked by Fate for Scene very efficiently. Um, the Tiger is for one. So we're going to pitch the, I guess we'll pitch the levels to play the footsteps here. They'll play the breed anger here. When this attacks, 
Okay, so they don't currently have a way to buff the Crouching Tiger. I really wish more of these cards said when this hits. I feel like the fact that they get these effects from just attacking is kind of just like insane. Um, let's bottom that. We'll save that for a second cycle. Dense Blue Mist I think will be fine. And Instant Speed minus one will be okay. I'm going to say no blocks, and if they do play like a Maul here, I'm just going to give the Fate. Um, we're going to say no blocks. I'm going to give the Fate for Scene here. Unfortunately, I will not attack. I guess let's bottom that. A lot of efficiency blocking right there. I really want to save the blue... I mean, I guess I can pitch a blue to play Dense Blue Mist and activate Footsteps. So I should use Tunic to attack for three here, right? I think that's technically a better play. <laughs> Alright, they're just blocking for two. So I can actually pitch the... Um, coalescence here. No, I need to pitch the shimmers, right? Because the shimmers... No, I need to pitch the mirror guy. I need to pitch the card that doesn't block. Um, and then we're going to play Dense Blue Mist. So it's, it's just attacks, yep. Tax to target you. It's literally just this round's on me, but as an instant, which is pretty cool. Um, and then this is for zero, so I have no reason to really get aggressive here. This one is for one. We'll block with shimmers. I'm not a huge fan of blocking with shimmers there, but we have to block on the Shuko activations. And then this is also for one. I mean... I could give up the value of Tunic here, which feels very wrong. I really want to arsenal the sink below, but I really don't want to give up my offensive piece. I'm going to make this decision. I don't know that this is correct. We're going to live on the edge a little bit here. This feels like an extremely aggressive play that probably shouldn't be made at the current current position, but like Tunic gets a lot of value. You're able to use it with footsteps a lot, so I'm going to attack for three. We have played Protect the Spectral Shield for a hot minute. Um, it is now access to 25 cards and 22 cards. It was like seven. It's now three. So this is kind of what we're looking for these are the worlds that we want to be in where we're like making our opponent's hands awkward imagine how bad that hand would have been with a dense blue mist in it that hand would not have been good at all let's block with metamorph I'm assuming this is go again. I want to be able to arsenal this. I'm going to say no blocks. We're going to give the sink below and put the unravel on the bottom. I think that's pretty okay. Man, there has been so much lag on my end that or my opponent is like really taking their time when I mean, we're like almost 44 minutes into this game right now. Come on, opponent. It's like we'll refresh. It's very possible it's me. 
I mean, there's got to be another art of war, right? Like everything just tells me there's got to be another art of war. So this is just four. So I can. Block like this. And our opponent still has like a like D reacts in their deck, which is like crazy to me. It's crazy good for us, if I'm being honest, but it is interesting. Have we seen a mall this game or anything? Yeah, we've seen one mall. Has they pitched any? I'm gonna be honest, I haven't been like super tracking my opponent's pitch stack this game, but I don't remember seeing one. I am not going to attack with the waning vengeance here. This is going to be an arsenal hold the line. And, like, I think this is our best card left in our deck at this point. In all honesty, I think this is, like, the best card we have left to, like, really try and, like, push. Whenever you play a Crouching Tiger this turn, name a card, it gets that name. If a Chi was pitched to play this, create two Crouching Tigers in your hand. Okay, well, that seems pretty bonkers. So, I mean, it just depends on if they have, like, a buff. Like, this is probably, I'm debating in my head right now, like, I'm internally thinking, like, did they set this up? Were they, like, was there enough foresight for them to, like, really set this up and, like, try to push this? And now they're... And, like, now they have the Art of War? That's truly where my head is at right now. We are going to footsteps and we're going to pitch the unravel aggression because it is probably the worst card in our hand. No art of war. Really? Um, yeah, so like it literally like me blocking does not matter. It's literally just life here. I mean, we're just going to take one and lose our Spectral Shield. I really don't want to give up Haze Bending and the card for my hand and the levels of Enlightenment. Okay. We're going to take zero. I'm going to put Haze Bending into play and pass. Now, we are definitely down more cards. They have access to 21, and we have access to 16, which is not great for us, but... We're just going to say no blocks here. If I have to, I will block with the Astral Etchings. I would like to get out of this turn unscathed if I can, but the odds of that are not likely. They just hit Haze Bending. Well, I think that's a real big W for us. So... We attack. Hang on. Let's think about this for just a second. So I want to be able to play both my cheese here this turn. So I can pitch this chi to play Astral Etchings to make this for four. Then I can play Shimmers. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is good. So then I can play Shimmers, and then I can play Homage, Flip, Activate Enigma. And then we'll have two Spectral Shields in play. Giving us pretty decent value this turn. And then we still have the Sacred Art in our deck, so... Might be coming up in this hand, actually. Oh boy, that's bad. I mean, it might be okay, right? We might be able to get out of this turn. There might be a world where I can... Hmm... I think we're going to take two and go to 11. So he's definitely trying to set up this Cosmic Awakening. And to be fair, like it would be pretty funny if he did. This would be like a one matchup where it's possible for that to happen. And my opponent attacks Shimmers of Silver. Okay, so if I play... Play Passover, pitch this to play Sacred Art, transcend, put this into play, and then on my turn, attack for eight. Okay, so Passover. We'll banish Command and Conquer, doesn't really matter. I think we're supposed to do that the other way around. Uh, I can't really change it now. We're too far gone. Okay. Oh, well, it is what it is. Um, and then I'm going to play Manifestations. And we're going to attempt to put enough pressure on our opponent here that it matters. I mean, to be fair, this is a 8, 10, 12 point turn. Like, we're attacking for a pretty decent number here. And then we have to play protect everything that we want next turn. So we attack for 8 right here, which is really good. Okay, so there's a Maul. They did block with 1. There's a Sink Below. You love to see these cards coming out of their deck. Because it means it's less offense they're playing next turn. If I have waited this game out long enough to really have a chance to maybe get there, that would be very good for us. Now, I mean, I was like, okay, if you want to block with that, that's fine. I think you should just go to 18, though. I'm not saying we're going to win, and I'm not saying that like we're in a good spot even. But, oh, that's not bad. Gets to block this out. He must have drawn that off of the... Um, Must have drawn that off of the, uh... Um, off the sink below. I'm gonna pitch the Rage Spectre. And I'm gonna play Dense Blue Mist. I probably should have hung on to the dense blue mist because my opponent just doesn't throw a card at me now. But to be fair, them not throwing a card at me is also very good for me because this is two go again into three go again. Actually, this can just be for five, right? Like we can literally just use this as E-Strike as a chain ender. Um, yeah, no, that's actually insane. We get to push a lot of damage here. <laughs> I 
We attack for eight. Trying to push up cards out of our opponent's hand here. I mean, there's not many things we have left to do at this point. I love to see them pitching to play d reacts this late in the game. I absolutely love to see that. And then we're going to pick Buff Power. So trying again to push some more offense. Okay. Just letting the 12 pedals go. I guess let's pitch an Unravel Aggression. And they're going to throw this at us. With there being no Art of War left in the deck, I think I might just give the hold the line here. No, I should save that, right? We don't need many more turns to be able to hang on here. Okay, so we're going to flash in the Coalescence. We're good. We, we're still okay. I panicked for a moment, but we're good now. Um, so now this has a counter on it. Wait, this is Shuko? So I can't do this? We can't block, so we're just going to have to give the Unravel Aggression. Not great. So if I had given the hold the line, I could have given the three block there, and I knew that was coming, so that was just a mistake on my part. Two go again. The thing that scares me about this next hand is that I'm worried that it has like Chi and another no block or two, and so I'm worried that we're going to lose our board. I love to see them giving up these cards this late in the game. Gosh, this has been such a long game. Like, this has been way longer than this game ever should have taken. I'm definitely going to look at my opponent's... My opponent's time spent playing this game. This is exactly what I was afraid of. Hmm. Yep. Did he fail to find a card? I mean, that's a good start, right? We're going to activate Enigma, which is exactly what we should do. Man, like I... Whew. The fact that we have stayed in the game this long is kind of crazy. Let's attack for two. Let's attack for two. Let's attack for eight. I was like, you have to give me something here, and then I'm going to activate Enigma. 
So now we have four spectral shields in play. I'm going to move this up here. Yeah, we have four spectral shields in play and a mirror guy with four counters on it. Gonna refresh here. I was like, I assume that. Okay. So we're going to pitch the Chi to play the Unravel Aggression here. We have Rage Spectre to block with. This has been a game, to say the least. I mean, this is a block three, right? This feels like a block three. Almost assuredly. They're going to throw the tiger at us. Which means I'm going to block with footsteps. Pitching. Manifest. They're going to pass. Okay, two for free. Yeah, they give us the headpiece, which makes sense. They get a chi from their deck. We pitch the aggression. They're going to play... They did have a third Art of War. Wow. I have to admit, I did not see that coming. The fact that they had a third Art of War is very surprising to me, considering how this game played out. They banished the Cosmic Awakening. I think they were definitely trying to end the game with this card. Um, I'm very glad that I did not let them get this off because I would feel uber sad if I gave that up. And then they could not block out the rest of it and we actually closed that game out. This game did definitely not start off in my favor. I was down on the card economy battle and I was also down on life, which is never a good place to be. And honestly, throughout the game, I made a lot of very small mistakes, which at a high level will cost you pretty much every game at a tournament. So it's very important for me to realize that and make sure that going forward, I'm not making as many silly mistakes. The biggest turn the entire game was by far at the end when I was able to pitch and energy to be able to put Manifestation of Mirror Guy into play. Being able to attack for eight, three or four turns in a row while protecting my board that late in the game made for such a great late game play and really put me in the driver's seat. The Sacred Art card that Enigma has access to was just so good and it was it was a bomb right there at the end of the game. If you guys would like to, you're more than welcome to point out any of the bajillion mistakes I made during this game in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys.